What's going on guys? My name is Trevor. Welcome back to the channel. 2023 has been a pretty dang good year for movies and before making this list I thought I'd seen more than I have but I've only seen four animated movies in 2023 and I've enjoyed all of them so today I'm ranking them from my least favorite to my favorite from the least best to the the great best, the best of the best right there. Let me know your ranking and how many animated movies you've seen down below in the comments. You should hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, and let's get into this. So at number four, really breaks my heart to put this movie here, but it's TMNT Mutant Mayhem, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. I'm a diehard Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, and going into this one, I had high hopes for it, but we've seen Ninja Turtles done time and time again, from the 90s to 2007, to the Michael Bay live-action ones. What are they going to do different? Well, they're going to do a lot different. The main thing they're going to do different is they're going to focus on the teenage aspect of the Ninja Turtles themselves. Everything about this movie just screams teenager, and that works to its advantage. The Ninja Turtles are always so likable, but this time, you can feel like they're a little bit more relatable. I'm getting a little old. I didn't fully understand all of like the... The terms that teenagers use nowadays, Riz. What's Riz? But nonetheless, this is a fun time at the movies. You'll smile, you'll laugh, you'll have a good time. It is a little formulaic. You have seen a movie like this before. But nonetheless, it's just a fun time riding around with Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo. I mean, they're just fun and cool characters. And instead of that perfectly for a sequel, I, th I think it did decent at the box office. So I really do hope we get a sequel. Maybe Superfly will make a return. At number three, the Super Mario Brothers movie. The second highest grossing movie of the entire year. I have a lot of nostalgia for Mario. I still play the game on the Nintendo Switch with my wife time to time. So coming into this one, I grew up again with Mario Kart. I played the Mario and Luigi games all throughout growing up my life. I was like the perfect age for it from on the computer to the GameCube. So just going into this, I knew a lot about the lore of Mario for a world that has so much going on in it. They did a pretty game good job fitting everything in there. It kind of works to its disadvantage at times because it, they're trying to fit too much in there, but just the way they explore this world, explored all the characters, and they could set up an infinite amount of sequels. You can do a Luigi's Mansion based off the game. You can do like a Donkey Kong game. You can do Bowser and all these different things. There's so much they could set up for the future of the Marioverse, and I'm here for all of it. I love the story that told this. I love the voice cast. Chris Pratt voiced Mario just so well. Anya Taylor Joy's Princess Peach. Did not know I needed her to voice a princess, but I'm glad we did. And Jack Black as Bowser. Peaches, 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 peaches. This is just one of the most fun, awesome, lighthearted animated movies you can see. I absolutely love the Super Mario Bros. movie, and I think it deserved to do over a billion dollars, just, just off nostalgia alone, okay? At number two is Pixar's Elemental, the first ever romantic comedy inside of the Pixar universe, and I loved it. Opposites attract you have uh, fire people, and you have, like, the water people, and they fall in love, and they join together, and two opposite worlds. People who are not supposed to be together find a way to make it happen and be together. And a lot of people were just saying that this is another miss for Pixar. I could not disagree more. I think this is Pixar back to its form, just like the relationship you have with a daughter and a father. You can relate to the sides of the family so well. One family is very strict. One family is just so loving. So you can really relate to those sides of the family. And overall, it's just you got to do what your heart tells you. And Pixar always has those hidden messages in there. I was laughing. I had a huge smile on my face. And when I walked out of it, I said, why were people People hating on that one because I absolutely loved it. That number one is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This is just one of the best movies of the year, plain and simple. It's everything more you could have wanted in a comic book sequel and a Spider-Man sequel and a Spider-Verse sequel. The animation style is even better than Into the Spider-Verse. It follows Gwen Stacy just as much as it does Miles Morales and that's what you gotta love with a movie like this. The action is done so well when they have it. It's a little bit slower than more Spider-Man movies we're used to but when they have the action, you have like a thousand Spider-Man characters on screen at one time. The action is done so well again the animation is done so well and it just sets it up beautifully for beyond a spider-verse and it's setting up perfectly to be arguably the greatest trilogy of all time and at least the best spider-man trilogy of all time because into the spider-verse is great across the spider-verse is dang near just as good i think beyond a spider-verse will be the return of the king for the spider-verse franchise and i cannot wait for beyond a spider-verse in 2024 Here's the hope it does come out. Let me know your ranking of every animated movie you see in 2023 down below in the comments section. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one.